Hi, in this video we're going to talk about polynomial functions. So, what are polynomial functions? So the prefix poly means many and then nomial means terms. So polynomial functions are functions with many terms. These are the functions, if you've been watching my previous videos, that I was calling one line of stuff. That's when you just have one line of numbers, coefficients, variables with exponents, then you have what we call polynomial functions. Now, the formal definition of polynomial functions look like this. f of x equal a n x to the n plus a n minus 1, x to the n minus 1 plus a n minus 2 times x to the n minus 2. Keep all going until you get to an exponent of x to the 0 an exponent of zero which is one so we don't write an exponent of zero so all the way down to you get to a constant term and this has an exponent of one but we typically don't write an exponent of one either so this is the general form for polynomial function each of these a's are coefficients and um, n the highest exponent so if you notice n is the biggest exponent and then every exponent afterward it decreases by one so you write in descendant order from biggest exponent to smallest exponent your biggest exponent n is called the degree of the polynomial and then again each of these a's are your coefficients but your a n is called the leading coefficient that's the coefficient that's leading the polynomial leading the all of the coefficients and so what we're going to be looking at in this particular video is we're going to look at how to look at a polynomial and determine its end behavior and also how to um, factor polynomials and find its zeros and we'll look at some in this particular video and then i have another video that i recommend later where you can um, dig deeper into polynomial functions so let's get started and jump into some examples so if I want to determine the end behavior of a polynomial, that just means when I graph the polynomial, what is it doing on the ends? Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? Is it going up? Is it going down? And so there are two things you're going to have to consider. And the first thing is the degree of the polynomial. And the second thing is the leading coefficient, the sign of that leading coefficient. So when you want to know end behavior, you want to know what is the degree of the polynomial and if that degree is even or odd, so I'm going to create a little chart to represent in behavior. And on one side of the chart, I'm going to have the degree. And I'm going to have even in one spot and odd in the other spot. And then along the top of this chart, I'm going to have the leading coefficient the sign of the leading coefficient. So it's either going to be positive or negative. All right, so these are going to be the things that determine the end behavior. So I created some little dances that I like to do for my classes to help them remember end behavior. And it's just basically, it's going to be kind of hard to see in my video, but it's either like this. That's if it's even, that means my ends are doing the same thing or if it's odd, my dance looks like this. And that just means if it's odd, my ends are doing opposite. So one side is going up, one side is going down. So this is my even behavior dance. This is my odd dance. All right, so you got the point. So basically, if it's even, both sides are either gonna go up or go down. Now, if it's even and the lean coefficient is positive, that means both ends are gonna go up. And I'm just going to draw two arrows up to let you know it's going up on the left side, it's going up on the right side. But if it's odd, I mean, if it's even and it's negative, your lean coefficient is negative, both ends are going to go down. Now, your textbook explains it like this. As x is increasing, going to infinity, y or f of x is also going to infinity. As x is decreasing, or let's start off with decreasing. They're doing the same thing. So as x goes to negative infinity, f of x goes to positive infinity. F, as x goes to infinity, f of x also goes to infinity. So that's the technical way to describe it. Alrighty, and the technical way to describe this is 
As x goes to negative infinity, that's on the left side, that means on the left side of the graph, your f of x, which is your y, also goes to negative infinity. As x goes to positive infinity, that means on the right side of the graph, your f of x also goes to negative infinity. And so that's the technical way to describe both ends of the graph going down. Now if it's odd, so remember this is my odd dance, that means they're doing the opposite. But if it's odd and the leading coefficient is positive, I like to think of Drake song. Drake song started from the bottom. Now we're here. He started from the bottom and worked his way to the top. That's a very positive thing if you start from the bottom and work your way to the top. So it would go like this. You start at the bottom, you work your way to the top. And so the opposite of that is to be to start at the top and to go to the bottom and so if you think of a celebrity who started off on top and ended up rock bottom so my students suggested kevin spacey or lindsey lohan they gave them as examples but basically that's a very negative situation where you start at the top and work your way to the bottom and so that is the end behavior when your um, degree is odd and your leading coefficient is negative the technical way to describe those is as x goes to negative infinity f of x also goes to negative infinity sorry this is really small and then as x goes to positive infinity which is the right side of the graph f of x goes to positive infinity this one as x goes to negative infinity f of x goes to positive infinity and as x goes to positive infinity f of x goes to negative infinity so those are the technical ways to describe that but what you really want to know is what's happening on the ends of your graph so either going opposite or going the same way that means they're going up or down and vice versa starting at the bottom going to the top starting at the top going to the bottom so that's end behavior so now let's look at some examples for example one we want to determine the end behavior of two different functions so the first one is f of x equal negative 4x to the fifth plus 6x to the fourth plus 2x and then the second one our second function is g of x equal 1 fourth x times 2x minus 3 to the t to the third times x plus 4 to the second and so we want to determine the end behavior of part a first so the first thing we want to know is what is the degree the degree is the biggest exponent so the biggest exponent here is 5 And then we also want to know what is the leading coefficient. And in this case, the leading coefficient is negative 4. And I just really want to know what is the sign of the leading coefficient. So the sign of the leading coefficient is negative. So um, the leading coefficient is negative 4. The sign is negative. I'll write it right here. And then my degree is 5, which is also odd. So yeah, remember my dance, odd goes like this. And so if it's a negative leading coefficient, then it's not the positive situation where you start from the bottom and work your way to the top. It's the negative situation where you start at the top and work your way to the bottom. And so your end behavior diagram will look like this, which means as x goes to negative infinity, f of x goes to positive infinity. And as x goes to positive infinity, f of x goes to negative infinity. So that is your end behavior for part A. For part B, um, our function is written in factor form. So in order to figure out the degree, you have to count the number of x's. So you have one x here. You have three x's here because that's written to the third power. And you have two x's here because that's written to the second power. So we have one plus three is four plus two is six. So the degree of this one would actually be six because we have six x's. And then the number in front is positive, so we will say our leading coefficient, and I'm putting LC for short, is positive. So we have an even degree, that's even. So it's either going to go up together or down together, either way. That's my dance. Hey, all right. So because it's positive, they're going to go up together. So your end behavior diagram looks like that. Both arrows going up. That means as X goes to negative infinity, f of x goes to positive infinity. As x goes to positive infinity on the right side, f of x is also going to positive infinity. So this means as x is getting smaller, the left side of the graph, y is getting bigger, going up. As x is getting bigger, the right side of the graph, y is getting bigger, going up.
And so that would be your end behavior diagram for those two functions. So that's how you work that problem. For example, two, we want to find the zeros of f of x equal x to the third plus x squared minus 9x minus 9. Now, zeros, what are zeros? Zeros are the same as x-intercepts. So basically, what makes this function the y value zero? Okay, and so what we want to do is we want to figure out what would make this function zero. And so first, what we want to do is we want to factor the function out. So this is a third degree function um, and we don't really know how to factor a third degree function but since there are four terms we can try to factor by grouping so we're going to factor this by grouping and again we want to know what makes this equal zero so remember to factor by grouping you group the first two terms together and then you group the last two terms together and then you see what the GCF is in each of those parentheses so what do these two terms have in common? They have an x squared in common. If you pull out an x squared, so if I take out two of those x's, I'm left with one x. If I pull out the x squared here, I'm just left with one. I have to put something there. I can't leave zero there. Because when I multiply this back in, I need to get that same thing that I started with. And then both of these have a negative nine in common. If I pull out a negative nine here, I'm left with just the x. If I pull out a negative nine here, I'm left with a positive one. So remember when you pull it out, you're essentially dividing. So think of what is negative 9 divided by negative 9? It's positive 1. And so now, when you factor by grouping, the whole goal is to get what's inside the parentheses to be the same. And it is the same. And so now I can factor out that x plus 1 from both of these terms. And so I get x plus 1 times whatever I'm left with. If I take out x plus 1 here, I'm left with x squared. If I take out x plus 1 here, I'm left with um, negative 9. And so I have two things that multiply to give me 0. So I could take each of these things and set equal 0. You could ac actually go um, two ways from here. You could continue to factor this x squared minus 9. That's the difference of squares. Or you could just take both of these and set them equal to 0 and solve for x. So if I solve this one for x, subtract 1 from both sides, I get x equal negative 1. So negative 1. But if I set this one equal to 0, I add 9 to both sides, I get x squared equal to 9. But then I have to get rid of the square, and you get rid of the square by taking the square root of both sides. And whenever you take the square root, you have to take the positive and negative square root. And so instead of that just being a positive 3, that's a positive and a negative 3. And so you end up with three zeros to this polynomial negative 1, negative 3, and positive 3. So if you had to write them out in set form, it would be negative 3, negative 1, and positive 3. Those would be your zeros to this polynomial. So how do we do it? We factored the polynomial, we set it equal to 0, and we solved for it. On example 3, we want to determine the zeros and multiplicities for the following function. m of x equal 110 times x minus 4 squared times 2x plus 5 to the third. Now this is just like the last example we did. We want to find the zeros of a polynomial, but it has a little bit of extra um, things that it want, and it's the multiplicities. And the other thing that's different from this problem than the last one is that um, the function is given to us in factor form. In the last problem, we had to actually factor the function. Then once we factored it, we set it equal to zero and solved. Um, so this one is already factored. So we want to find the zero, so we'll just replace m of x with zero. And then we'll take each factor and set it equal to zero. Well, this doesn't have an x in it, so I don't have to set this equal to zero because there's no number there um, to solve. There's no x or variable there to solve for. But this one, we will take it and set it equal to zero. And then we will take this one and set it equal to zero. In order to get rid of the square, you just square root both sides. And the square root of zero is just zero, so you get x minus four equal to zero. And you would take the positive and negative square root, but the positive zero and negative zero are the same. So you get x minus four equals zero, add four to both sides, you get x is equal to four. Here, to get rid of a third power, you will take the cube root of both sides, and the cube root of zero is zero, so you get two x plus five equal to zero. Subtract five from both sides, 
you get 2x is equal to negative 5, and then you would divide by 2. So you get x equal to negative 5 over 2. So you get zeros at 4 and negative 5 half. However, since these had exponents on them, more than 1, or whatever the exponent is, so basically whatever the exponent is, that's your multiplicity. So even if it had an exponent of 1, it would just have a multiplicity of 1. But this has an exponent of 2, so that is the multiplicity for this 0. So the multipli multiplicity here would be 2. And then the multiplicity for this one would be 3. And so that just basically means how many times does that factor count in the factorization for that polynomial. So x minus 4 to the second power means x minus 4 times x minus 4. So that 0 counts twice. Um, and then this is 2x plus 5 times 2x plus 5 times 2x plus 5. So that 0 and negative 5 have, it counts three times in the factorization. And so this is how you will find the zeros of the polynomial along with their multiplicities. So this is how you um, find the end behavior of polynomial functions and also how you begin to find the zeros for the functions. I recommend that you go ahead, if you get this material, that you go ahead and watch the next video, which is actually graphing polynomial functions. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever, you can include them in the comments below. And let me know if this video helped you or not. If you understand now, if it helped you to understand, make sure you like the video by hitting the thumbs up um, or hitting the like button. And um, if you have any comments, put them in the, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. And if not, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And I will see you in the next video.